Welcome to Shape by Faith with your host, Teresa Rowe. To find out more about Shape by Faith and Teresa Rowe, please visit shapebyfaith.com or visit the YouTube channel, Facebook, or Instagram. And now, here is Teresa Rowe. Welcome to Shape by Faith. We shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. My guest today honors God through her writing, and this is a top priority for her. She's a Mississippi writer. Her name is Patricia Bradley. She's been a guest before last year on Shape by Faith. I love her heart uh, for the Lord. I love what she does. Her story's amazing. Patricia is a USA Today bestselling romantic suspense writer living in the Deep South. Her first published works were short stories published in Woman's World. Bloodkin is available on her website as a thank you for visiting her site. Patricia has four series published by Ravel, a division of Baker Books, the Logan Point series, the Memphis Cold Case novels, uh, the Natchez Trace Park Rangers, and the Pearl River series. She's also written two sweet romances for Harlequin uh, called Matthew's Choice and The Christmas Campaign. Her newest book, Fatal Witness, book two in the Pearl River series, just came out in February. Patricia's also the co-founder of Aiming for Healthy Families Incorporated. It's an abstinence healthy relationship organization that offers youth the skills to make better choices. She speaks to audiences nationwide about writing, and she teaches writing courses at conferences. So welcome back to Shape by Faith, Patricia. Thank you. I love being here. Well, and I and I love um, hearing your story. I, I love what God is doing in your life. So just to kind of recap your life in a nutshell, tell us about yourself and what you're doing before becoming a published author. Oh, before becoming a published author, um, the, the years just shortly prior to that, I worked in the abstinence program. Um uh, here in Mississippi, and we had a federal grant that allowed us to go all over the southeast. With uh, we even did abstinence in Nevada at at uh, Las Vegas. Wow! So I'm a potter, and we took the potter's wheel uh-huh. to show uh, reclaiming sexual purity, or that if you make a mistake, you just start over. And uh, it was a that was a hoot. We had a blast uh, wow. everywhere we went, and and connecting with the kids. Uh, in schools and in churches, uh, and just uh, so many of them do not understand that uh, purity in a relationship builds trust, and mm. so it. I mean, it's like a foreign language to them sometimes, unfortunately. So, but Absolutely. our our pro, I, I no longer go in the schools. Mm-hmm. We have fifteen employees who do though. Here, I mean, our little nonprofit has grown. And we uh, do classes all over Northeast Mississippi. <clears throat> that's incredible. So that's a nonprofit that you co-founded, right? It is in 2002. Wow. Okay. What's the name of it, Patricia? It's a- aiming for, aiming healthy, for healthy Family. Fam- okay. All right. Yes, I did say that in your intro. Okay. So let's talk about your writing. When did you first begin to write and what was your first story about? Oh, well, I I was not a writer. Uh, I never thought about writing until I was 35 and I couldn't sleep. So I'm laying there staring at the ceiling and all of a sudden a man pops in my vision and he's standing in the window and he turns and he looks at me and he says, my life wasn't supposed to turn out like this. Hmm. Oh, wow. And so I... Uh, and then he didn't go away. And so when I couldn't sleep, I would tell myself stories about why his life didn't turn out the way he expected. And uh, I never wrote them down, though. I mean, I'm, I'm as a reader. And uh, but then these other people came to live in my head and they wouldn't go away until I wrote down their stories. And one of the first of them uh, was a story for Woman's World. Mm-hmm. The very first thing I ever wrote was a short story. And Woman's World asked for 2,500 words. So, of course, I sent 4,500 words. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> I know. You know, by rights, that editor should have popped that manuscript in that SASE that I sent. That Back then, you sent in, I called them sassies. You uh-huh. sent those with your material. It was all snail mail. 
Uh-huh. And instead, uh, she wanted to buy it. She liked the story. She liked my voice. And she cut it hmm. herself, which I mean, I, I thought, wow. And uh, that was an education. But then the next story, uh, I had learned my lesson. I only sent 500 extra words. So, but the, and that, <laughs> ed- that editor made me cut those 500 words. And I learned more from that than I had almost anything else. And I learned the, how to make every word count. And that's probably why people think of me as a lean writer. Mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of description. I don't have a lot of, I do, you know, I'll set the scene. But it's there's nothing extraneous about my writing. So, okay, I, I need to go back to this vision that you had, okay, mm-hmm. with this man. Yeah. Okay, so what, was this just like your eyes were open and you actually saw this, or was this in your head you saw this? It was in my head. Okay, um, okay. Because, I mean, it, it, that's the way, I mean, I don't see, like, the, when I was working in the abstinence program, I had not one single fiction thought the whole eight years I worked there. Uh, one thing, it, it was a consuming job. I mean, we were writing workbooks and curriculum and uh, and and just so busy that I didn't really have time for fiction to take hold. But after I uh, went part time, I was sitting at my couch one day and um, doing my Bible study. And all of a sudden there in my mind beside me was a a raven-haired woman and she told me her name and told me someone was trying to kill her and I said yes God had given me back my romantic suspense wow so it you know I mean it's like he had a job for me to do and I did it and once it was completed because we had completed the curriculum and the workbook and um it just it's like then okay now you can go back to writing (laughs) That's incredible. So, Patricia, when did you realize you had this realization that, okay, this is God. He's given me this to do, and and this is a gift? Probably before the abstinence, because my husband had passed away, and I was taking a couple of years to write, to learn, see if I could get something published. And he, uh, and it's like God was telling me, you got a lot to learn. You know, don't be in a hurry. Mm-hmm. enjoy the journey and oh that, that took a few years though that took a few years to sink in mm-hmm. but uh and then i think that's probably part of the reason that i was he wanted me to do the absent plus it was just i was at the right place at the right time where i needed to be and i have always had a heart for teaching uh teenagers the importance of abstinence in their relationships yes so how old were you when your first book was published? <laughs> mm-hmm. I ter- had just turned 69 when, and it was exactly 10 years ago today, I think that the book came out. Wow. Wow. So, uh, it was Shadows of the Past. Uh-huh. And, uh, and so this book, Fatal Witness, will release on the anniversary of that which it was February the 4th or 6th. I, I get those two both mixed up, but right. it's right in here, the, the, the 10th anniversary. Well, congratulations. So any time. Thank you. They could have released it any time, but they, it, it just, I don't think it was intentional, mm-hmm. but I was, I'm glad that it worked out that way, that my 10th book, Rebel, is published on the anniversary of the first book. I think that's a God wink, don't you? I do too. That's what I call it, a God wink. <laughs> yeah, it has to be. I'm amazed what God does in our and lives. you're never too old to live mm. your dream. Oh my gosh, no, no. And this retirement stuff, I mean, we should be we should be working towards the Lord. Not that you have to work, you know, so hard that you're exhausted, but God has given each of us specific things to do in our giftings and yours is writing. So you continue writing and yeah. Yeah. And so whatever gifting God has given someone, they should be doing that uh, for his glory until they breathe their last breath. I mean, that's just the way I look at it. Uh, And I just can't imagine sitting down and doing nothing. No, no, I can't either. 
No, <laughs> I'm sitting on a ball right now because I can't sit still in a chair. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm starting to get my ball. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can. We're going to take a break real quick. You can get your ball. We'll be back with more Shape by Faith. Everyone stay tuned. Welcome back to Shape by Faith, where we shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. Okay, so Patricia Bradley, Mississippi writer, um, is with me today. Her newest book, Fatal Witness, is book two in the Pearl River series, just came out in February. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But Patricia, I'm curious about your discipline as a writer. I mean, you have authored what? You're going on 17 books since, and you told me since 2012. You started, you had your first book published when you were 69. I mean, that's a lot of books. It is. <laughs> so it is. that's got to take some discipline, like in your attention and your focus. Can you give us a what your day looks like uh, when you're writing? Anyone who knows me and knows how ADHD I am is amazed that I can focus and write these books because I, rabbit, there it goes, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, but but writing focuses me. Uh, but if I'm on deadline, and I did, I wrote two ninety-five thousand word books this year. Wow. Uh, and edited one, but if I'm on deadline, um. I get up in the morning and I usually, a lot, it just, it varies, but I like to try to get 350 words down and then I go and do my Bible study and quiet time. And then I come back and I work until I always write to a word count and uh, it starts out at probably a thousand words a day, five days a week, 5,000 words a week. And so that's usually doable, but as it goes on, uh, I try to increase it until uh, I'm usually by the middle of the book and on toward the end, I'm writing between 2,000 and 2,500 words a day. Wow. And so, uh, that way, uh, and most of them are good words. I'm rarely ever, I've never cut a scene that, I mean, I, now I have totally rewritten a book. Uh, take I, last year, in fact, the one fatal witness uh, started the, it, the the version that is published. Uh, I cut half of it out and rewrote it to what it is now. Uh, so it it's um, it, it just sometimes they, 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 the the opening just didn't work, and you know it it's not working. And and my editor knew it wasn't working, so we worked together and. Uh, she gave me an opportunity to rework it, and I thought, well, all I have to do is just get to this point and tie it in. Well, that might have happened at the end. <laughs> so, mm. but anyway, but no, and discipline is something I know a lot of writers who want to have written, but, yes. but that doesn't get the words down. And it does take discipline, mm. and, and only God can give you that, I believe. I honestly believe that uh, I, because. I until I was writing, I really wasn't the most disciplined person in the world. And that spilled over into other areas of my life. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. does more, I, go ahead. Uh, does write does the writing it sounds to me that it does come easy to you, does it? No. Uh do I pray I have never prayed as much as I did have since I've started been writing because so I, sometimes it's every word. Sometimes it's every paragraph. Sometimes, you know, uh, it, and I have found when I'm staring at that cursor blinking, if I will simply start typing, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to even pertain to the story. I, you know, I'll set a timer. Any, I'll tell myself, you can write for five minutes. That's and good. so I'll write for five minutes. And then the ideas kick in. It's like God shows up as long as I'm doing my part. I was going to ask you that about ideas, if you had them before you sat down or if you sat down, started typing, and then you were inspired. Well, it varies. I, I bounce back and forth from being a plotter to a pantser to now I'm back to kind of plotting. Mm -hmm. um, I have to, the, I only have to know, I have to know certain things before I can begin writing. And one is who is my character? What made them who they are when they walk on the page. Mm, mm -hmm. I have to know what the crime is, uh, why and and why is 
the story happening now? Why not six months ago? Why not six years ago? Why now? And once I can lock those in, and that's what has I, I have to show in the story, because I mean, uh, I realized that in one of the Natchez books when I was uh, the character, a body was discovered, moved, a body was moved. Well, well, why now? Why didn't they move it 10 years ago or five years ago? And so I realized then I had to have a reason for a crime being committed. So you've got to do your research, though. Oh, yeah. I do a lot of research. So what does that look like? Oh, it looks like going down a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> I love research. I mean, you know, I, I on this last one, uh, I'm blowing up a dam. I don't know how to blow up a dam. No. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm talking to a friend who does know how to blow up oh. a dam. And he said, you know, I really... I'm not comfortable talking about this on the phone because you do know they're listening. Oh my goodness. That's hilarious. Said, I don't want somebody showing up on my door step. <laughs> well, no, why we're talking about blowing up a dam. Oh, wow. Wow. So yeah, you would have to do a lot of research. Oh uh, yeah, so- I did. I did. And, uh, it's all for just, and that really comes through in the book mm-hmm. that I've done all this research, but uh, I have to know how something happens. I had to know how would anyone get a bomb? Where where would you put it to blow that blow up a a, a, a dam? Mm-hmm. And there was one book that I, that was suggested for me to read. It was fiction, but it, it was fantastic. It it was written by an engineer, and oh, so okay. he did go into the details. And once I had the concept down, you know of of why. If why you would put the charge at a certain place and everything, uh, it's like okay, and then I can do this. That's so, interesting. That yeah, is, I, 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 that's one of the things that I love about writing is the research because I'm I'm a history nut anyway. Uh huh. And because anything historical, uh, I use you know the, or anything about like blowing, I can get lost in it. Mm. <laughs> blowing up a bridge. <laughs> That is so funny. Uh, <laughs> I, I am sure that I have, they have a file on me. They on may. <laughs> they may. You're certain to get your share of re- reviews on your published work. So what's your opinion on reviews? The only ones I read are the ones that my my publisher sends me that they want me to use. I, I don't read the reviews. Um, I think I may have early on, and I know that a one, uh, a, a two or three star review probably that that it would depress me. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, you know, I don't have to do this to myself. There you so go. I don't read reviews. Uh, it I do notice on Amazon, you know, like I have, I think Shadows of the Past has two or three thousand four and a half star reviews, which to me is amazing. So, uh, and I, I do see those occasionally because a lot of times I go over there for, for different things. And uh, I did notice that today it being, I mean, the day that uh, Fatal Witness released that it slowly inched up in the, the Amazon uh, top books. So that was a good thing. That's wonderful. So, Patricia, how often do you take real life stories and personal experiences that you have and weave them into your books, or is everything just fictional, like made up? Not well, not really. Um, I, I, I take a lot from the headlines, and uh, I have taken personal experiences and put them in the books uh, because I know how, I know in one of the I think the third or the fourth uh, Logan Point book, uh, I put an experience that happened to me when I was in the fifth grade in the book because I I had a good friend that I was supposed to spend the night with one weekend and she didn't come to school and we found out on Monday morning that her father had killed her and her mother. Oh, wow. 
And I mean, that and that back then you didn't have counselors come in and help you work mm -hmm. through it. I sat up in my bed for months thinking my dad was going to come in and kill us. Oh, wow. Because this man was a pillar of the community. Uh huh. Wow. What an experience. Okay. Let's, let's take a quick break. We'll be back with more Shape by Faith. Welcome back to Shape by Faith, Patricia Bradley, Mississippi writer, written 17 books. We're going to talk about her new book today. But Patricia, what has kept you writing? Well, I think one reason I have kept writing is after I wrote the first book, I went to a writer's conference and a nurse bought my book and took it home and read it. And she sent me an email telling me how much she enjoyed Shadows of the Past and but I made a mistake. On um, She gave me the page number, and I thought, no way. She said, you called a respiratory therapist a respiratory nurse. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking, oh, oh, I could not have done that because I know better. I haven't, yeah, I've, I've had people in the hospital enough to know. Well, so I looked on that page, and sure enough, there it was. So I, she told me she was, since she had told me she was a nurse 30 years, I, I was writing A Promise to Protect, which features a doctor mm -hmm. as a heroine. And so I asked her if she would read the manuscript and correct any other dumb mistakes like that. <laughs> and she agreed to. So she did and found quite a few. And uh, after I finished, we finished and I turned the manuscript in, I asked her if I could get her, give her, I wanted to give her something because she was so helpful. And I asked her, I thought maybe she might like a craft book. She said, oh, no, after I saw what you went through, I don't want to be a writer. <laughs> <laughs> that so is I, funny. Yeah. And so you know, I'm thinking, well, I don't know what I can give her. Of course, I gave her a copy of the book and I meant, and I gave her credit in the acknowledgments for helping me. So I said, she said, but I was supposed to re be there and read your book. And I was supposed to critique this manuscript because uh, the problem your heroine had is the same problem I had all my life. And in the book, the heroine had overheard her mother tell her father that I told you we shouldn't have had that second kid. Mm -hmm. and, and my heroine was that second child. So she believed her mother didn't love her. And the girl said, seeing the way your heroine handled it showed me that I too could change the way I looked at things that I could, I could get beyond this. And I said, she said, that book turned me from a very bitter person into one where I have forgiven the people in my life that needed to be forgiven. And it has changed my life and my children's lives. Wow. And I'm sitting there crying, reading as, I, as I'm reading her email and thinking, that's why I write. Mm. And so mm. when the words won't come, I know that God has a purpose and that he will give me the words and he's never failed. He knows when the deadlines are and he knows the mistakes I make. So uh, it just it, that that's why I write is because I think Christian fiction can make a lot difference in people's lives. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. That is powerful. Wow. No wonder you keep writing. Yes, of I course. Do. Okay, let's talk about your new book, Fatal Witness. I think it's one of my favorites. Well, I, every book that I have just finished is my favorite. <laughs> but it is I, I, it. Fatal Witness is uh, the opening of the a, a ten year old girl uh, wit witnesses the murder of her parents and. Uh, she blocks it. There's a medical term for it that right now I can't think of. But mm -hmm. uh, and her uncle uh, whisks her away to Montana because he's afraid the, the killer will find her and kill her, too. So he and so she has no memory of her life in Tennessee. And uh, although it, it and as the story opens, she is beginning to remember a few faces, but she does has no context for remembering them. And but her grandmother on her mother's side has never given up on looking for her. And the grandmother's a potter and she takes uh, a magazine, uh, Pottery Illustrated. And uh, Danny has been featured in it. She's on the front page, which she's not supposed to be because the report, the 
the uh, reporter was supposed to only have an article and no pictures because her uncle would never allow any pictures to be taken. So, uh, and so the grandmother tracks her down and wants her to come and she wants to talk to her, meet her. And so by now, Danny is wanting to find out who she is. And that's basically the story is rediscovering who you are. Oh, that's good. Oh, okay. So we can purchase that book anywhere. Is that correct? Anywhere. Okay. Wow. Okay. So is there, is this, did you say this was, was this book two? It's book two in the Pearl River series. Okay. So what's the book before that? What's that? The counterattack. Counter -attack. Okay. Okay. Um, it, it's probably best to read your books in order, isn't it? Not really. I mean, no? this, they have a, they're standalone. There are oh. characters in it that, uh, their their story, but it doesn't have an impact on this one. Okay. Uh, Mark Lassiter was is the hero in this one, and he was in book one. Danny was not, but he was. And Alex uh, Alex Stone, who is the chief deputy, uh, she that was her story. Uh, Counterattack was. Okay. Okay. So, but uh, this is totally. This is a all of mine are standalone. All right. But, the, the community and some of the and the characters float in and out, but it's basically Danny and Mark's story. Okay, that's good to know. Um, Patricia, before we have to close, what do you want your readers to take away from your books? Hope. I, I think that's what makes a difference from general fiction and Christian fiction is that Christian fiction authors always offer hope. Mm, that's good. And that, that to me, that's basically what I want them to know that that God is there. He's never left us, and He won't leave us, and that we we have hope. You're right. That is so good. I want to thank you so much, Patricia. It's always so enjoyable just listening to you. I could listen to you all so day, fun. but thank you so much for being a guest. Oh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. And thank you for listening. I'm Teresa Rowe. Everyone have a blessed day. Thank you for listening to Shape by Faith with Teresa Rowe. Remember to visit shapebyfaith.com to find out more about workouts, the TV show, podcasts, blogs, Shape by Faith products, and much more.